let's uh, go back to the beginning of the presentation. Oh, yeah. um, we all know Jay, uh, the JavaScript, so what is that? Yes, you're allowed to talk. It causes something to go click, right? So if there's anything attached to this click event, uh, if that button does anything, we're going to make it do it. What does this one do? Yeah. So we set up whenever someone does click on this button or whatever it is, we're displaying an alert. So that's easy. Um, what does this one do? It causes the custom event barbaz to do something. Actually, it doesn't do anything. Because we're missing a piece of code. We have to um, actually set up on that custom event for it to do something. So we're going to uh, bind to the barbaz event and make it do something. Uh, this gets back to what I was talking about with the sections, inside sections. Uh, I wanted to change dash, dash, dash into a section. Why? Well, again, because I'm doing the HTML5 um, presentation. Um, I'm actually doing this in, as a custom post type in WordPress. And so I have one editor area, and I do all my slides, and then I divide each slide with dash, 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 dash. It's a nice, easy, fast way to do it. Um, there are other ways, but this one works good for the presentation. So um, I could, uh, oh, the other thing too, one reason for doing this is if you've ever tried to put sections into the WYSIWYG editor, it doesn't work really well. Uh, the WYSIWYG kind of chews it up and makes it look ugly. Uh, so we could, I could have just used um, short tags. But short tags are evil. Uh, they're ugly. Uh, you tend to forget is it start section, start underscore section, section underscore start or section start, or something else. Uh, they're easy to forget um, and can make a mess. So because they're ugly and I'm lazy, I just want to type dash, dash, dash every time I put a new section. Still with me? Raise your hand if you're with me. Oh. I found that if I say raise your hand if you're not with me, that everybody's afraid of raising hand. So. All right. Um, so let's do this. Um, on the PHP side, if we want to uh, make this happen. Whenever we save the post, we just replace all those dash, dash, dashes with end section, start section, so forth. Uh, the problem is that whenever we come back into the visual editor after doing that, we've got the same problem again. Uh, the other option is just to save those dash, dash, dashes um, in the content. And then whenever we output the content to the page, uh, we do a hook on the content. And then um, make those changes. So this solves the um, PHP side of it. Um, and here's just you know a quick example of you know the code that would go into that. But what if I want to see sections in the HTML editor? Okay, in the WYSIWYG editor, I don't want those sections because they look awful uh, and they're hard to work with. I add a new or I hit enter and it adds a section when I just wanted a paragraph and stuff like that. But over in the HTML editor, I actually want to see those sections. I want to work with them, interact with them, as well as that one. Um, but um, I don't want to have to fight against the sections in the visual editor. Um, so we can go live. Unfortunately. OK, so there are sections um, all laid out and in the HTML view. Whenever I switch over to visual view, I can switch those to the uh, dashes. Also, if I want to do a um, subsection, I just put a angle bracket and dashes. Uh, obviously, this is not the best solution, but it works for a demo, right? Um, and then we come back out of the uh, subset or out of the section into the main 
intersection um, with the angle where I can go in the other way. And I can go back and forth between those. Um, one thing, well, actually, I want to get another one, so not yet. All right. Um, so as we switch back and forth, we're changing dashes to sections. Uh, to do that, we could bind on um, the events the, for the two tabs. So whenever someone clicks on visual, someone clicks on HTML, uh, we switch back and forth. That's an easy solution. Um, the problem is what happens in the next version of HTML, or next version of WordPress, if uh, we decide instead of calling that tab HTML, we decide to call it text, something we're talking about for 3.5, uh, um, or other things, other parts of the uh, DOM structure change or whatever, what you're binding to you may not be able to. Uh, and also, how do you grab that content in that block at the right time? First of all, how do you grab the block of content? Volunteers? Okay, I'm the one who's supposed to be up there making a fool of myself. So, okay, you know, you just grab it. Easy. The problem is that as HTML, I'm sorry, as WordPress is going through there, WordPress is changing that content too. When you click on those tabs, WordPress is changing it. You knew this, right? So if we come over here, we take a look at this. Let's just inspect the element real quick. What do we actually have here? Um, I can get over far enough. Okay, we have a paragraph, we have breaks, uh, we have P tags, VR tags, other things along in here. Whenever we switch back over to HTML view, what happened to the P? What happened to the VR? Something uh, referred to in the uh, WordPress world as uh, WP Auto P. Uh, it's actually going through and it's pulling those out. Uh, so, do you change your content before WordPress does this stuff, after WordPress does this stuff? How do you make sure that you don't overwrite what WordPress is doing? Plus, too, there are other plugins, uh, translation plugins and other things along that line that may also bind in the same uh, event. And you got to make sure that you're hitting things at the right time. Um, so, um, all right, um, so somewhere in core, there's a little bit of code. This is the code for WP Auto P, what I just mentioned. Adding the P tags and adding the VR tags, taking them out, you know, as you switch back and forth. Um, this is a big chunk of code, but really, that is the part that Core really does. So it just calls the no P thing to pull those P's out. But in addition to pulling those P's out, out of there. It does something else right before and after that.
various problems with uh, nesting and other things like that that uh, we can do better with. But that would be a lot of code to fit on one page. So uh, basically what we're doing here is we are receiving the object O and also E. It also passes the um, event object, but we're mostly concerned about O right now. So we're going to take O, we're going to look at its data. We're going to do a replace on it. Uh, we're going to do a second and a third replace. Basically, we're going to go through and we're going to pull out uh, greater than dash dash dash, less than dash dash dash, and dash dash dash. Switch those to sections. Uh, we're also going to add the section at the beginning and the end of whole content so that it actually is correctly nested, uh, correct HTML. Uh, this first section here. Uh, right here runs as we're switching from visual mode to HTML mode and then the second section below that runs the other direction so we're coming back out of that um, any questions on this piece of code right now? Am I boring into tears? <laughs> Sure. I can go faster. <laughs> I can go slower too if I need to, but anyway. Um, okay. cool. uh, some things to be aware of on this, um, and I put a copy of the code down here again, uh, just so we have that as references when we're looking at this. One thing is that we're attaching to the body uh, element to protect against other DOM changes. So, you know, WordPress changes every three months, right? Uh, but, you know, we're constantly uh, updating WordPress, and so we want to make sure as those changes happen that we have a consistent place to hook this into. Uh, also, it's one way to make sure that the event only fires once. Yeah, there are other ways, but it kind of makes things a little less uh, sensitive there. Um, we're also, uh, with using this type of hook, you can only pass an object. You can't pass an individual value, a string or a um, number or whatever. So if you want to pass those, obviously you just put it in an object and pass the object. But uh, the other thing is uh, you don't return a value. That means these are not really filters. Uh, we can't return a value back. It almost kind of works like one, though, because we are changing the value of that object. We're actually directly manipulating that object. And um, so when we get done with whatever our action is that we've looked into, we end up with a modified object. Uh, so it kind of acts as a filter, but it's not really. Um, so the short story is, if you're familiar with uh, the PHP side of things, um, Whenever we hook into something, we've got do action. The closest thing to that is just triggering an event, a custom event. Uh, apply filters would be similar to, again, triggering an event, but this time we're going to actually pass an object for those um, custom event hooks to modify. Um, and then if we're writing a plugin, we would have either added action or added filter, um, where we're either modifying, or it's either not modifying the object or we are modifying the object. Uh, we can still pass the parameters uh, on the third line there, put a P in there as a placeholder for parameters. We can still pass the parameters, but we don't have to, um, or we shouldn't be changing them if we want to treat it as an action in that case. Um, but again, it's not a complete solution. It's not really what we'd like to have. If we want to have that same model, we, I mean, one of the things, honestly, that makes WordPress so awesome is that core is light. It does what it has to do. It does what everybody needs. And then if you need custom function money, hook it in. Plug in, right? Um, WordPress is adding more and more and more JavaScript over time. Uh, that's a good thing. It's awesome. Uh, but 
if we're adding all that JavaScript, we want to make sure that we have an easy way for people to write plugins to um, add into the functionality that's there. Um, some of the things that, with the current implementation with how we're doing books right now, uh, it's really tough to remove an action. Uh, we'll look at why in a second. And then also priorities. Uh, make sure that they fire all these hooks that we hook in. What if we have five different things happening at once? And they're going to change that object, right? What if they're changing the wrong word? Um, they might end up doing things to each other. So anyway, uh, removing an action. Um, so plugin one or core uh, possibly has this awesome uh, function attached to barbas. Then plugin two comes in and adds a function we really don't like. So then in plugin three, we unbind or do off to get rid of what well, we're trying to get rid of this one. But what we end up doing is we get rid of both of these. We get rid of the awesome thing just so that we can add in a replacement for that. Uh, so we're actually shooting ourselves in the foot doing things that way. Um, not the ideal solution here. Uh, the other thing is with the uh, priorities. We found a way to work around some of the priority stuff, um, as long as somebody, one person wants to do it before and one person wants to do it after, we're probably safe. Um, but, so we're doing the trigger before the auto P and the trigger after. Ideally, what you would do is this auto P would actually be bound to a custom event. And so those three lines that have the red in them would be consolidated down to one trigger event of maybe WPLP. And then you assign priorities to the different functions that you attach to it. And they land in the right order. Uh, go through and edit it. So um, that's what we're looking at. There is actually a core track ticket for it, uh, ticket 21170. Uh, this is my favorite ticket at the moment, uh, where there's a lot of discussion going on about how to make those better. Uh, one of the guys I work with, Carl Danley, uh, has actually put together a really awesome uh, library that actually gives you add action, remove action, uh, add filter, remove filter, chainable, uh, priorities, uh, a lot of cool stuff there. Still uh, got a few things that uh, need to be worked out, but hopefully, uh, pretty soon we'll be able to do, uh, have a much, much more powerful uh, action filter set. And then uh, I also uh, put up a list of all the places where you can find uh, books. For PHP, we've got the codex with a nice listing. I probably have, should copy this over to the codex somewhere. I just haven't yet. But anyway, for right now, uh, this is a list of the places in four where you can find um, the hooks like I just showed you, the one for WP Auto P. There's about 20 odd other ones uh, that you can work with uh, to make some changes. And they don't all look the same either. Uh, you might have to look pretty close. Um, I try to identify, I think, the file name and the line of code uh, so that you can find it. Uh, that's all based on 3.4, so, you know, as that code is scored, that'll become out of date. But anyway, it gives you a reference point for right now. So then you can actually start poking into some of those actions and uh, making something really cool. Uh, make your plugin better, uh, be able to do some functionality. You might not otherwise. Um, any questions? Yes? What if you're dealing with, say, a particular plugin that's um, you're relying on for the functionality of the website, and let's say that plugin has short codes that generate output. Now, there's some little thing in that output that you want to make some minor change. Like, let's say that plugin developer didn't assign an ID to this long function list that's going to be spit out. So you want to go in and assign an ID to it so that you can turn it into, say, a jQuery slideshow or whatever. Now, is there some way to put a wrapper around that short code so that you can make you know, some kind of minor change to the output? And that short code is going to get executed dynamically because it's sitting 
the only whatever action you're going to um, perform is going to get performed at a finish load. Let's see if I can restate this uh, for the, uh, we're recording this also, so I'm going to try to restate it so we have a recording of it um, without me looking too bad. Because um, there, there's several pieces going on here. But, so basically the question is, can we take code that is um, being output by a short tag? So this would actually be happening in PHP at this point. Um, obviously it could be outputting JavaScript, but um, we are talking about inside PHP. Uh, so we're going to take that code and we're going to capture it somehow. We're going to make some modifications to it before we output it.
Other questions? Anybody have any tomatoes? <laughs> okay. Well, um, we'll call it done then. <laughs>